What is going on? This is Darius Ramada for Nissan here. And today we're going to take a look at this 2024 Nissan Pathfinder SL. Let's check it out. Under the hood, you get the 3.5 liter V6 engine, mated to a nine speed automatic and four wheel drive. Up front styling wise, you're going to get a big beefy grill here. You're going to get down here your uh, front parking sensors. And then your headlights are going to be this kind of split design of headlights on top, running lights above it. And then down here, you're going to have your uh, turn signal with high beam built in. So it's kind of this multi-staged design. Uh, very, very noticeable, very easy to swap. Front side, again, these nice alloy wheels. They're gonna be kind of twin five-spoke style with the uh, brush. It's big, it's actually the pockets are really hard. So it just adds a little bit of internal pattern to it. All four doors on here are gonna have keyless entry. So you're gonna see these that allow you to lock them. And then when you grab this and give it a pull, It'll unlock. You can do that on all four doors. These doors are going to open nice and wide, about an 80 degree opening here. And then you're going to have these cool built in sunshades. Great if you have kids in the back, give them a little bit of extra sun protection. And when you're not using it, just pull that up, drops right down, sits in place. You're going to have a couple of drink holders up here as well as down in the lower portion of the door, you're gonna have 18 total throughout this vehicle uh, between cup holders and drink holders. And consider these like bottle holders versus cup holders uh, because you wouldn't necessarily put an open top beverage down here in the side angle thing. Uh, <laughs> back seat wise here, it's gonna be all leather interior, of course, on the SL, uh, plus climate controls for the back, uh, second and third row are gonna be right here and USB ports down low. If you need to use this for cargo, give that a pull and that's going to drop down it'll sit nice and flat with the third row down as well but gives you good surface if you're going to be putting any large cargo items in i'm just going to raise this back up and be right back now if you need to make entry into the third row all you have to do from here is give a little press of this button on the side and it's going to basically pop itself forward and this is on a sliding track right there this gives you plenty of room to get into that third row so you just basically step up through here and get situated back here. And then when you do this, you're just gonna drop that back and it's gonna get itself positioned back. Um, you've also got a lap bar underneath here that you can use to slide this backwards and forwards. So you can kind of partition that leg room as needed, throw it all the way back if no one's in the third row, maybe move it forward a little bit and split it up some if you have people back there. There's also a button on the back here that your passengers in the third row can press to open this up. That way, if Maybe if you got a bunch of kids in here and uh, the second row people decide they're not going to let the third row people out, the third row people aren't at the mercy of the second row. So cool, cool little feature built in right there. Let's go around to the back here, give you a look at this trunk space. So you got your SL badging down there. And in here, we're just going to give that a little press. It's going to open right up. You're going to have your buttons up top to close it. And then back here, Good little bit of trunk space back here behind the third row. Obviously with that third row down, it'll give you a ton more. We pull up on this, it's gonna actually give us access to our extra storage compartment up underneath here. And then if we need to use that third row area for more, uh, more storage instead of seating, we can pull this, pull this, and then right here. I like to push up on this with my palm until it drops itself right down like that. So it gives you plenty more room. So similar on this side, give this a little pull and then it can drop right down, push up on this, and that gives you plenty of room. You're gonna have another 12 volt plug in here. Uh, there's a few of those throughout the vehicle. Uh, and then if you need to use like the cargo nets or anything like that for extra storage, you're gonna have these little hooks right here and down there that you can attach those nets to. When you wanna use the third row again, just pull this right by hand, nice and easy. This can also recline so you can pull that back, give them a much, much nicer angle. Obviously it takes up a little bit more of your trunk space, but it gives them a little bit of extra comfort back there in the third row. When we're done back here, I'm just gonna give this button a little press. It's gonna close up all on its own. Let's go to the front. And here we are from the driver's perspective. So a couple of things we're gonna do. First of all, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake and give the start button a press going to fire itself right up. You get your little welcome sequence there on the dashboard, and then this will all spring to life as well. One thing I like to do is show you the window sticker on the car so you can see what it has for features and options. 
feel free to pause at any point and give these a, a more thorough read through. I'm just gonna kind of glance over them a little bit here. It's an SL, so basically you get big screen, leather, uh, built-in navigation. You can take a look on there, fuel economy, low to mid-20s. Certainly not bad for a three-row SUV that's not a turbo four-cylinder. So this one being a V6, obviously, is going to have just a little bit of suffering to fuel economy, uh, but for the sake of uh, hopefully longevity with not being a turbo engine. Over here, you're going to have some uh, additional controls for your music, so you can adjust your volume right there, your stations right here, and then these buttons here are going to go through your advanced drive assist display, digital speed, driving computers, t uh, tire pressure monitoring, you got your navigation, your music, all your safety stuff, and a whole bunch of settings that you can go in, through here and access and really kind of customize this vehicle and make it your own. So lots of good stuff in there uh, for you to look at and for you to adjust, um, depending on what your preferences are in here. Moving over to the right side of the steering wheel, you're going to have all your cruise control stuff here. This is going to have pro pilot assist. So um, that means that you get steering assist and distance pacing. So when you turn this on, your screen up here is going to change. And you'll see one more change. There we go. So we can use this button right here to change your distance. You got long, medium, and short distance there uh, that you can set it so that basically the car will slow itself down sooner or, uh, or later, depending on which mode you have it on. And then down here, you have a quick button to turn on and off your steering control. So it, it can really either assist your steering or not, depending on how you have it set. Uh, when it does that, it's keeping you centered in the lane as opposed to bouncing you off of the line. So it's not doing this constantly. Uh, it's, it's trying to just give you those ever so slight subtle adjustments to get you uh, centered. So very cool, very easy to use. Uh, one of those things that you kind of have to get hands on time with it to really, uh, really know if you like it or not. <laughs> Here, you're gonna have the big screen with the built-in navigation. Um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, both of those in here, Sirius XM built in. Uh, you get a three month trial of Sirius as well when you buy it. And then down here on your climate settings, you're gonna have heated seats for driver and passenger, heated steering wheel, and controls for the rear that you can do right from up front. So if I wanna do that, I can adjust what the rear is gonna get, their mode and everything. And then I can just do that to go back to driver control or driver and passenger settings. Moving down low here, you can have a wireless charger built in, Type-C and Type-A plugs, as well as another 12-volt plug here. Going to get our electronic shifter that basically to use it, you're going to press this button, push forward to go to reverse. That's going to give you your backup camera and your overhead view. If we do forward here, excuse me, pull it back for drive, um, that's drive right there. Just doing that. If you do it again, like the second time, like I did, it's going to go into manual shift mode, and then you can use the paddle shifters to adjust everything. But if we don't want to do that, just put it in drive again, and then that'll show a D again instead of a one. Park, press the button. That's it. Nice and easy. Foot's off the brake. We're not going anywhere. Um, as I had mentioned, the camera, you've got this forward view as well, the overhead. You've also got a passenger side front corner view. Great for curbside parallel parking. You can use that. You'll actually see as I turn the wheel, you can see that, that wheel and tire moving in real time. So you can see that kind of kick out there a little bit. Use that to get yourself lined up with the curb without hitting the, the curb with the wheels. Hit that button again, and you get a nice little wide angle. So a few different modes, a few different views that you can do with that. Um, really cool little feature to have, honestly. Uh, then you're going to have all your drive modes here that if you adjust, you're going to see right on the advanced drive assist display here what mode you're in. You can do this on the fly. Realistically, you can leave it in auto 99.9% .9 of the time, and it's going to do just fine. Other than that, you're going to have home link built in for your garage door openers right here on the rear view mirror. So it's kind of hard to see with the, the focus and the back lighting, but you've got three buttons right here uh, that you can program in for your garage door. Hopefully I covered everything you were hoping to see in this video. If I missed anything, feel free to leave a comment below for uh, any questions or anything. I try to get back to those as soon as possible. But uh, I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon.